Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time on a ferry on the most classical route between mainland Europe and Great Britain, what is from Calais to Dover. I'll be traveling a P&O ferries. They also to take food passengers. Um, what I will do in this video, I'll show you how to get here from the main railway station of uh, Calais. Show you the ferry terminal, the ferry, how to get from the ferry terminal, the other side of the channel, so in Dover to the railway station over there. From there on, I'll take a train to London. Um, so on the video i hope you like this video or that it's this is a helpful video to you if so please give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see more trip reports by train sometimes by ferry and sometimes buses subscribe to my channel but for now let's roll the intro <music> i arrived in calais with a tercv this is basically a TCV that will run from the last section as a local train as well. So it combined a high speed and a local train, but obviously it will use the high speed line. This train started its journey in Paris, but I will take it from Lille Europe. It's way shorter than taking the conventional TER trains between Lille and Calais, but I made a special video about this as well. And if it's not there yet, just stay tuned. Please do note that if you take any high speed train to Calais, you will end up at the railway station Calais Fronton, what is not really close to the city center. This is located on the high speed line London Paris and it hosts some TCV trains and some Eurostar trains as well. What is a pity though is that most information is only available in France. I understand that this is France, so obviously information is available in France. However, first of all, it's a long distance train and second of all, this is really a popular route for people who like to travel to the UK. However, I had connecting public transportation to the railway station Calais Fiel, but is located right next to the city center. This was mentioned in Google Maps, but not in Trainline where I bought my ticket. Anyway, more on this in another video for the TERCV from Lille to Calais. Located at the front of the railway station, so not at the big bus stop at the side, you will find these tiny buses that will go to the ferry terminal. Obviously, these buses have a very low capacity. However, they do run very frequent, what makes it really a good connection. It's also possible to walk from the railway station that's located right next to the city center, so Calais Ville, and that will take you about half an hour. Just make sure that at the moment you take this ferry, no matter if you're traveling as a food passenger or if you're traveling by car, that you do plan enough time. This due to custom formalities. The building where you find the ferry terminal is quite big and as I came in it showed that there are some facilities available here. However, it's not that much. It's quite an open and spacious area that's quite functional. A replica of an airplane Louis Blériot used to cross the English Channel is exhibited over here as well. This was in 1909 and in aviation history this is really a big milestone. Even though I'm not a big fan of the aviation industry due to sustainability, I must admit that the aviation industry also brought us a lot of good things. However, if we fly, we should not do it too often, and especially not on shorter distances. So fly responsible. I could go on forever about this topic, but this video is to show you how it is to travel by ferry as a foot passenger on this route, and most likely you travel by train on both sides of the border. Counters of P&O, Irish ferries, some car rental companies and an exchange office are located really close to each other. As a food passenger, you must collect your ticket at the counter. Of course, within this building there are toilets available and there are some vending machines for snacks and drinks. It seems like at the upper floor there's also a meeting room and around the main area there are some spots where you can just have to sit and wait. There are not a lot of power plugs available over here. Apart from these tiny cute buses that took me here, I also noticed this bike sharing program. By the way, just outside this terminal, there's also a small waiting area outside. I didn't put it that well on camera, but you can see a bit here on the right. 
at a specific time that's communicated at the moment the ticket will be overhanded, all food passengers will be called and we will brought to a bus. This bus will go through customs, basically at the same spot as where all other buses will do this as well. For example, Flixbus. First, the French customs and right after that, the British customs. After the custom check, the bus will go to the ferry. This area is huge and there are even some tax-free shops. Obviously, you cannot go there if you're a food passenger because the bus will go straight to the ferry. As a matter of fact, the bus will drop you right in the belly of the ferry. And if you do the road the other way around, you will be picked up over there. What basically means that if you disembark in Calais as a food passenger, you'll probably be one of the last passengers to disembark. The vessel that I'll be traveling on today is the Spirit of Britain. There's also an identical ferry that's called the Spirit of France. Both these vessels do run on the section Calais-Dover, so between France and Great Britain. There's a capacity of 2,000 passengers, 1,059 cars, of which 180 trucks. These vessels have been in service since 2011 and are pretty new, especially for the maritime industry. They have been designed with the environment in mind, so they are quite energy efficient. We have been dropped off at deck number 3 and most facilities are at deck 8 and 9. The other decks are all car decks and you are not supposed to be there during the crossing. Obviously it is a very short crossing, only one and a half hours, so you cannot book your own private cabin. Of course you can take the elevator between the different decks, but you can also take the stairs. In that case it is a bit faster. Directions for what facilities can be found where are marked very clear throughout the vessel at deck 8 and 9. There are dedicated zones like for example the family area and there's also an area for passengers traveling with pets. For the pet area there's a small area outside and within the pet area there's also the pet lounge. This is way bigger and over here you find some nice seats and lots of power plugs, water and there's even a coffee machine over here. And even though it's a short journey you don't have to worry that you'll be bored during this crossing. There are some arcade areas for kids and for all the people there's also a gambling area, I'll show you in a bit. There are lots of places where you can have a sit over here, but not all places do have power plugs. There are several restaurants within this vessel and different restaurants are in different zones. This restaurant is for example in the family area and it was quite busy with kids walking around over here. Some of these sofas over here looked really comfortable by the way. And what I really like is the view at the front of the vessel. Of course there are lots of other places where you can go to for some food and drinks. However I think this is the most common spot because at the moment you are entering the vessel this is one of the first spots you see. Of course there is also a tax free shop and I don't think I have to explain everything about this shop. It's the basic tax free shop stuff you can buy over here. There is an information desk and right next to the information desk you find a change office and like I mentioned before lots of places where you can just have a sit. There are also some slot machines like in most international ferries because well the gambling law is different per country. At deck 9 there is this so called food market, what is also a place where you can have a bite and a drink and personally I like this a little bit more, mainly because it was much quieter than at the other spot during my crossing. Over here you can also have a great view at the front of the vessel. For commercial drivers there is a dedicated zone. There's also this club lounge where you can go to and have unlimited drinks, however you need to pay an extra surcharge for this and that was 29 euro per person. I only paid 35 euro and besides that I don't think that's worth it. For the club area there's a dedicated zone outside, but of course there are also some other zones outside. At the moment I did the crossing the weather was perfect, but even if you don't have strong sea legs. This is a short crossing anyway. This is also a really popular route of 
our boat ferries, but also other vessels between Britain and the UK. We also saw the sister vessel of the ferry where we are on right now. What is the Spirit of France? And of course, we also saw some other ferries that are running on exactly the same route. For car passengers, you also find ferries between Dover and Dunkirk in France, by the way. At the moment, you see the white cliffs. You know you're in Dover because this is one of the most famous spots of the big city. Food passengers could disembark as last, and this is something I don't really understand because there's a gate attached to this ferry. At the end of the gate, there's a bus waiting for the food passengers to bring the food passengers to a public building where custom formalities could take place. And that's basically it. I mean, the bus is not going on the ferry itself, so I don't understand why we had to wait for this. It's about a 40 minute walk to the railway station, so I took another train as I initially planned on this. Anyway, what is a rule? Make sure there's enough time, no matter if you're traveling from France to England or the other way around. And especially if you book promotional tickets that are for a specific train, like for example advance tickets in the UK. There is a small bus stop at the ferry terminal in Dover, but that's only for National Express long distance buses. At last, if you're interested in other trip reports, of course you can subscribe to this channel. However, in the description of this video on YouTube you find a link to a map and on that map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes and the icons do indicate the railway station, ferry terminal or sometimes bus stop reviews. Of course there will be more videos added to this, but it might be useful if you're looking for a specific route. So that's it for this video. From here on I'll take a high speed train from Dover prior to London and Pancras. Once again I hope you liked it, if you did so give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more trip reports by train and ferry, subscribe to my channel. See you on my next video.